Hari Om. Recently someone asked me questions about how to act around someone who's leaving their body, how to comfort them, how to comfort those of their family who are mourning, and how to actually be a serene and composed being in the presence of what seems to be great loss. And these are difficult questions to answer, but in seeking the answer, one must look to the saints and some scriptures, especially the Bhagavad Gita, to find how to compose ourselves, how to act in such a circumstance which will come to us all and which we will no doubt find ourselves in amongst those who are grieving and those who might be leaving their body prior to our own experience of passing from this mortal frame. <clears throat> of course, what comes to mind first is what Sri Krishna said in the Bhagavad Gita, which is actually his very first teaching. In chapter 2, verse 11, when the, where the Lord first speaks to Arjuna, after smiling, when the Lord actually listened to Arjuna's bereavement and his conclusion that he will not fight, he would not bring death to his loved ones, his family, his guru, his teachers. So the Lord says in chapter 11 this, O Arjuna, your words are wise, but your sorrow is for nothing. The truly wise mourn neither for the living nor for the dead. Then he goes on to say, There was never a time when I did not exist, nor you, nor any of these kings, nor any of these beings that seem to come and go, our friends, our loved ones, those who we cherish and feel a loss at their passing. There is never a time when they shall cease to be, nor will it be a time in the future which they shall cease to be. For those who have known the inmost reality, know also the nature of this. What the Lord is actually speaking of in this chapter, the word he's using, which delineates between the living and the dead, which is very interesting because here the Lord is saying in the Gita that there is no, there is no death, there is no loss. Then immediately he says, do not grieve for either the living nor the dead. So here's a contradiction which we must come to terms with, because if the Lord is saying, you must not grieve for the living and the dead, or the dead, and therefore understand also there is no difference. But the word he uses in Sanskrit is gatasun and agatasun, meaning living and dead. So it's very interesting and we must come to understand what is the difference between living and dead as proclaimed by the Lord in the Gita. Gatasun means living, agatasun means death. It comes from the root asu and gata. Really what the Lord is saying is those who are with breath and those who are without breath. Asu means breath, gatasu means with breath, agatasu means without breath. So the only difference between this state where we're living, breathing, and experiencing life, we are in possession of breath. Without it, we pass out of this mortal frame. But for those who experience death, great fear, great doubt, great sorrow and loss comes. So how can we act in such a way? How can we try to console those? Actually, the saints have said that when a person leaves their body, the first thing that they experience is great relief and a tremendous sense of freedom and serene peace. But just after departing the world, especially in the, in the midst of family members and loved ones, the second thing the soul experiences after this sense of great freedom and relief is a sense of confusion. 
This confusion has been described by the saints as coming from the fact that the soul, now having left the body, is now perceiving those loved ones who the soul has moved away from, literally only, as Sri Ramakrishna said, move, the soul has just moved from one body out of it, meaning exactly from one room to another room. Exemplifying what Sri Krishna says, there is no end of existence. It's just consciousness and awareness moves from one realm to another realm, and usually, in most cases, from a realm of uncertainty to a realm of certainty, peace, serenity, and oneness with God. But this confusion is felt by this soul who has just left the body because they are able to perceive, in a sense, those who have left behind, and they don't understand why they're mourning, why they're sorrowful, because the soul now is experiencing tremendous relief, tremendous oneness, and a sense, and a sense of accomplishment, of especially leaving the body, in a sense of faith and without fear, hoping for God's blessing. And so this is a lesson that we should learn, that we should try to understand that what has really happened is an accomplishment of human life. The purpose of life is fulfilled at the moment of death because we take with us virtues and some habits, but the idea is if we've led a life where we called on God, where we tried to live a virtuous life, where we helped others and were good and exemplified goodness, then the end is truly good. And in that situation, we should not mourn. We should not, who have been left behind and experienced one passing from this world, we should guard ourselves to not be in a sense of suffering and loss. For there is no loss according to the Lord. There is no diminishment of the soul. As Swami Shivananda, the great saint of Rishikesh said, at that moment of death, we realize nothing else exists but our soul entering the horizon of divinity. And we realize nothing belongs to us except that eternal Atman, that eternal soul, that spark of divinity which is in us is now about to meet, in a sense, truly its maker. And in this sense, we should understand it is a good thing. It is an essential thing. So those around us should not mourn. Also, when we're with those who have sitting and hoping and praying for a good passing, we should just sit and be serene and happy and pray. Prayer for those who are leaving their body is the best and really the only thing that we should be doing. Turning God's name, being of peaceful countenance, even smiling. Those around who don't understand might say, how are you looking happy and serene at this time? We're losing the great one. And if you're asked, then you can explain, really there is no loss. It is, it is a fulfillment of life. So in this regard, we should hear what the Lord says, that it is only a diminishment of appearance. It is only that which is ordained by God that we should come and go and come and go for the purpose of learning and loving God more. So with these things in mind, we should be a comfort to those who suffer at the time of losing a loved one. And we should comfort those who are about to depart with the sense that yes, in the end, God will prevail and all doubt and confusion will be rent asunder by the grace of the saints, by the efficacious power of prayer before the Lord, that he will take us and keep us always. Adios.